Hello everyone, welcome to week 6 lecture videos. I know that when I am recording this lecture, all of you must be extremely busy with preparing your assignment 1. Um, today's lecture might help you in data analysis part of your research proposal. Because in this week, we will be covering uh, basic data analysis, descriptive statistics, chapter 20. We have six learning objectives today. And as usual, I will be posting separate videos on these learning objectives. And in this video, I will particularly talk about descriptive statistics, uh, what are they and why they are used. So first of all, what do you mean by descriptive analysis? So let's start with an example. Let's say you have surveyed 1,000 Australian customers regarding their coffee test, which coffee they prefer most, um, what's the price they pay for each of the coffee, how frequently they consume coffee, and so on. Now, you want to make a descriptive analysis for this coffee test survey. Think a little that what your analysis will look like. So probably you will rank uh, which uh, coffee brand is the uh, most favorite. Probably you will find out what is the mean price the customer pay for coffee. Or you might be interested about the mean frequency of uh, the coffee drinking by your res uh, respondents. So this is uh, descriptive analysis. And you understand that, as I mentioned you in the last class, that when we have a data set, the first uh, analysis we do is the descriptive analysis. And so by this descriptive analysis, we aim to describe our data. We aim to describe our data means we aim to present the basic characteristics of our data, the central tendency, the distribution of data, variability of data. Central tendency, if you can remember in the last lecture, we also learned mean, median, mood, distribution, uh, if it is a normal distribution of it, or it deviates from normal distribution, if it is highly variable or if it is more stable. So all these are components of descriptive analysis. The next point is histogram. Histogram is a, a graphical way of presenting frequency table. We learned about frequency table in the last lecture. We have seen that frequency table is a tabular representation of data where we show the number of times a particular observation appears in the data set. So if we show it graphically, then it will be a histogram. So in this case, each bar will show the number of times a particular response comes up. Look at this example. This is an example of a histogram. So in this case, the customers were asked that from where they buy beers. And four alternative answers were there. Drug store, convenience store, grocery store, and a specialty store. So this number of customers uh, answered that they buy from drug store. And you can see the most of the customers buy beer from convenience store. And the second the most um, popular store is grocery store. And last of all is a specialty one. So this is an example of a histogram. Now, uh, as we are talking about descriptive statistics, we need to realize at this stage that all descriptive statistics are not suitable for all sort of data. Here comes the role of level of scale measurement. You know we learned that uh, there are four scale measurement, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. Now, what descriptive statistics you will be using will depend upon the level of scale measurement of your data. For example, if your data is nominal or ordinal level, then the only descriptive statistic you should be using is frequency table or mode. In this case, mean or standard deviation uh, will not be a meaningful one. The reason is pretty simple. In nominal case or in ordinal case, you have only a uh, very few number of answers. For example, yes, no, or a rank between one, two, three, like this. So mean or standard deviation of this nominal or ordinal level data will not carry any information. Let me give you a very concrete example. Let's say you have one variable gender. 
and uh, you have two genders, male and female. So some of your respondents answered that male, and some of respondents, some of your respondents answer female. So you coded one male and coded female as two. So the only two answers or two observations you have in your entire data is one, two, one, two, one, two. Now, if you calculate average or if you calculate standard deviation of this variable, that doesn't mean anything. That's why for nominal or ordinal data, uh, only uh, suitable descriptive analysis will be frequency table and mood. However, for interval and ratio scale, we can use mean standard deviation. For the same survey, this um, the BR cell survey, customer were asked what is the price they pay for each bottle of beer. And this is the histogram, and you can see that mean is 11.67. So on an average, customer pay $11.67 for each bottle of beer. So price, you understand that price is a ratio scale variable. That's why we can use mean and standard deviation. We need to understand one thing that Nominal and ordinal scale data are called lower scale data or lower level data, and interval and ratio scale data are called higher level data. Keep it in mind that descriptive statistics, those are suitable for lower level data, are also suitable for higher level data. However, descriptive statistics, those are suitable for higher level data, are not suitable for lower level data. What does it mean? What's suitable for lower level data like frequency table and mood, you also can use them for higher level data for interval and ratio. However, what's suitable for higher level data, for example, mean and standard deviations are not suitable for lower level data like nominal and ordinal case. So in this video, we understood what is descriptive analysis and how the level of a scale measurement will determine what descriptive statistics we should use. So please see the next video for discussion on the subsequent learning objectives. Thank you.